Hello Knitting Addicts, welcome to my living room and to this 16th episode of my creative podcast. I'm Selma and you can find me on social networks and in particular Instagram and Ravelry as Selma TLBC. Today there will be some sewing, a lot of knitting and uh, probably a lot of general talk. I hope you're well. Um, I want to start this episode by welcoming and thanking all of you for joining me today. You are more and more numerous joining us here every episode and it makes me really, really happy. Um, today is Friday. This is not my regular filming day, but tomorrow I'm brunching with some knitting friends and uh, so I had to adapt because that's when I usually film. Um, we can start directly with my finished objects. There will be three knitting and crocheting um, finished objects. First one is this mini hat. Well, it's, it's called the Volcan hat. It's from the um, crochet book, which I showed you last episode. I made it using a crochet, well, a size 6 crochet instead of the size 10, which was called for in the pattern. Uh, but I didn't have anything to um, crochet it with, which was big enough. So, yeah, I followed the instructions. I had some trouble counting the, st the stitches at first, but... Um, but yeah, it's so easy to actually frog stuff while you're crocheting that it was really no problem. Well, I guess that if you're making more sophisticated stuff, um, it gets harder to frog. But for that kind of project, it's really no problem. I don't know why it has like that pointy top. I don't know. Um, I don't know if it's actually supposed to look like this or if I made a mistake somewhere, but I figured that it still looks okay. Yeah. So it's going to go to the solidarity box. And, uh, and yeah, well, unfortunately, you also have more and more kids actually sleeping on the streets. So I guess it will find a, an owner. As sad as it is. The second crochet project is this basket. I used a pattern which is in the same book again and uh, it was very easy. I don't recall if the designer actually tells you how many rows you have to go up in order to actually close it but I just went for gut feeling let's say. Um, yeah, here you can see that there's a bit of a... Yeah. But there was a knot actually in the in the yarn, so I just... I thought, this is going to my bathroom. That's my uh, flannels and washable um, pads for, for uh, removing makeup and washing my face, so... It's not as if it's going to be on display in a window or anything. It can be not a hundred percent perfect but i'm really really happy with it and it's good practice anyway um today i'm drinking a tea which is green with berries date orange fig and rhubarb and it's really good um so that's what i crocheted and here is the knitting project Ta-da! It's the pebble hat. Uh, the pattern is by Sylvia McFadden. She's the designer who also created the Waiting for Rain shawl for something which is a bit more famous than this hat. So it's really, really lovely. It's super easy. Well, super easy. Yeah, it is pretty easy. These shapes are made with slip slip knits and uh, knit two together. And as much as the knit two togethers are easy, the slip slip knits are just 
plain annoying when you're knitting double because um, that's what you have to do. This is supposed to be knit with um, double yarn. I used leftovers, which I had in my stash. Um, one is from Mrs. Crosby Loves to Play. It's her, or their, hat box um, base, which is, I don't remember exactly what's in it, but it's really warm. I think it has cashmere. And the second one is by Riverside Studio. It's regular uh, merino with Stellina, which makes it shiny. It's nice. Um, I had used that yarn to make the ribs on the mittens and the hat which I made for well, for Edinburgh Yarn Festival last year. Easy, really. Uh, I knit it in well as part of a cal, which in which you were actually supposed to take five days to knit any kind of accessory so I went for this hat and it took me four and a half days <laughs> not knitting all day obviously because I still have to work but I'm really happy with how it turned out yeah once again it goes to show that you should really read the instructions um, carefully because at first I had started um, mixing up uh, slip slip knits and knitted together which looks very different in the end <laughs> Uh, but I recognized it quite fast, so it was okay. It's just that at some point in the chart, well, at the beginning you start with a slip slip knit and then you start with a knit two together and if you don't pay attention then you will keep going as you were and it's not going to look good. So don't do like, don't do like me, read your charts and the explanations. Um, yeah, I first cast on, well, used the Italian cast on met method for it because it makes a ribbing shape, you know, so it makes it basically invisible. But on 110 uh, stitches, it just, it was driving me nuts. It was turning all the time. It was just, ugh. so after five tries, I actually emailed Sylvia McFadden to ask her, well, I, don't, I messaged her on Instagram anyway to ask her what she recommends because there is no specific indication in the pattern and she said that she always uses a long tail cast on so that's what i went for as well and it was really fine and it just it looks perfectly normal <laughs> so i should have gone for that from the start um yeah that's basically what i wanted to tell you about this one yeah, the, no, there, there is one more unusual thing about it, well, unusual, is that the ribbing actually starts with a purl stitch and not with a knit stitch, but that's basically it. Um, that's it for the sewing, oh, sewing, knitting and crocheting projects, finished objects. Um, I have three finished sewing objects. The first one is this skirt. It's the Mcom Mini by uh, Mcom Marie. It's a PDF pattern. <laughs> I used the same, well, I used less leftover fabric from the Brooklyn short, which I showed you last time. Um, it's full of issues, but I don't mind. I think that if people actually see them, it's because they have their face this way next to my skirt and in that case they have a problem not me so i'm good with the small problems it has uh i finished it last night i started i actually started the night before that um no particular issue there was just one thing yeah i finished it yesterday because i still needed needed to buy the zipper and the bias for yeah the bias um, so I basically did all the rest before the one thing which really annoyed me is that when I attached the sides together I decided to try it on before doing the before doing the bottom and 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 attaching the bias and everything and uh, I recognized that it was way too big like really too big I followed 
the instructions on the the chart, you know, the size chart. And I always measure, well, take my measurements again before I start something because I want to make sure that I choose the right size. Uh, I chose the size L and I really think that I could have chosen the size M because I had to remove 1.2 centimeters on each side, which is quite a lot, to be honest. But now it's looking good. And since I'm going to wear it with thicker um, tights anyway, I figure it's not bad to have a bit of a margin at the waist, you know, also because I tend to bloat. Yeah, I, I actually attached a small hook here because uh, because I recognized after I actually uh, attached it that the zipper was a bit too low, too far from the from the top. Yeah, and as you can see, also my sides are not exactly at the same height. Why well, shit happens? Honestly, I don't mind. So I don't think that everyone else, anyone else should mind it. Um, I actually recognized that I had uh, sewn the bias really bad at some point. There was a fold on one of the sides. So I decided, I thought, I'm just going to, you know, cut the seam and attach it again. And let me tell you, it doesn't work this way. This bias, I don't know if it's like that for every bias, because I think it's only the second time which I that I actually um, uh, use bias, but... Um, it's very, very fragile. I basically ripped it off. <laughs> so good thing I still had some left. I went to the side seam and I I folded that and touched another part, another part. Yeah. It's okay. It doesn't look perfect, but it's okay. Yeah. So we say in French. Better can be the enemy of good, something like that, roughly translated. I don't know if the English language has such an expression, but yeah, it's true. So that's the first one. The two, the two others are homemade patterns. It's basically project bags. So the first one is supposed to be used this way. I'm really proud about it, to be honest. Um, the only problem is that the pocket which I attached inside is a little small, so it's not it's not really convenient. And um, I used interfacing because I was afraid that the inside fabric would be a little light, you know. But it ended up actually making things really thick, <laughs> and uh, some of the seams were a bit annoying. But yeah, that's okay. I learn as I go. At least it's standing on its own, you know? And it's really convenient. It can host... Actually, I knit... Oh, I forgot to show you something. Too bad. I will show you afterwards. I knit the sample uh, for my next pullover with um, two cakes at the same time because it's supposed to be knit double. So one is mohair and the other one is regular yarn. And they both fit. So that's fine, right? And it's really convenient to be able to attach it this way. I think I'm going to get a lot of use out of this one. And uh, yeah, I I will probably make more. Uh, I used the same fabric to make a second project bag, which is very different from the first one. Um, this one stands as well. So, which makes it really good to basically fold the top and have it open next to you on the sofa or on the table or anywhere you're going really. Um, you can close it completely. And I like the small handle on the side. I'm experimenting. I, I forgot to actually add the pocket which I had planned inside. Afterwards it was too late, but um, yeah, I'm really happy about this one. I should have written the dimensions of the pieces before I actually started sewing, but it doesn't matter. I will be able to find them again, so it's no problem. Yeah, I really like this one. I'll make, I will make it better next time. I will add a pocket, I will add, add some other stuff. Anyway, 
I'm happy about this one. Still. The um, whips are, well, I'm still working on my Geneva cap by Kate Davis, but well, there is not much progress to be seen at the moment. <sighs> Crap, I think I lost a stitch. Okay, I will deal with that later. So this is my pavement sweater by Vera Velimeki. And yeah, it's going well, it's growing. I have like five centimeters left on the body. And then I can start on the sleeves. I should remove these. They're a pain in my... Mm. <laughs> they, 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 they keep stabbing my project, which is not so nice. So yeah, well, you can't see much, and but I can tell you there are five centimeters left. And afterwards, I will start the short rolls for the bottom. But first, I will actually try to fix what I just broke. <sighs> Yeah, I, well, the problem is with this one that uh, it waited for so long in my project bag that um, it got very irregular at some points. It's all, it's all, it's all wrinkled, you know, and um, I don't know why, but some of the stitches, at least the, the upper parts look very irregular. Hmm. Like, as if the ten tension had changed all the time, you know, which is a bit weird. And we will see that. I hope it, it evens out when blocking, you know. And if not, I would just, I would just wear it at home and not, never take it out, which would be a shame still, a shame still. That goes to show you should never wear, wait too long before finishing a project. When you start something, just do it, finish it. Um, where did it go? Oh yeah, I finished the sample of the gauge for um, my next sweater, which is the Secret by Atelier Emilie. I will make it in a well during a cal which starts on the first of March and ends on the thirty first of June of May, thirty first of May. Uh, maybe it's better to give me a deadline, you know, that way I really have to focus on it. Um, it's uh, it's so soft. It's organized on Ravelry by uh, three French bloggers. Um, I will put their names in the in the description box below so you can take a look if you want i think the signing up ends on the first of april and uh, yeah the only problem is that i got 24 stitches on 31 rows for 10 centimeters on 10 and i need 21 on 30 so i will have to um, do it again with um, 3.75 needles instead of four and then we will see it's so soft it's it's the it's the yarn which I bought last week um, at the festival, which I knew would be super soft. To be, to tell you everything, I've been wearing it this way, you know, under my bra strap all since this morning because I finished it yesterday afternoon. Uh, just to check if it's not if it's not scratching or or itching or anything. And I basically just forget that it's there because it's so soft. So uh, this morning I was <laughs> I was in a meeting and at some point I looked down and I was like, oh, I have a piece of my sample coming out. Mm, they know I'm a bit weird sometimes, so they don't worry. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, so that will be my task this week to knit the sample again. It's okay. It's the first time that I actually, no, it's the second time that I actually knit a sample, so it's fine. Um, well, that's basically it. Um, I will take it out. Um, I received two fabrics. So this one, it will be for my Aster blouse by uh, Colette Patterns. It's a black chambray. It's really nice. 
Uh, I've I've already um, chosen the size, and I will start cutting the pieces that probably this weekend. And I also received uh, some Milano knit fabric for the Moneta dress, which is also by Colette Patterns. It's so nice. It's the first time that I'm actually going to use something like that, and it's really really nice. It's not that stretchy. But, uh, but it's really, really a great quality of fabric. I'm really happy about that. Uh, well, that's it. I will go... Uh, yeah, we'll have so many knitting events in weeks to come. It's going to be so nice. I love meeting with friends. And Edinburgh Young Festival is coming. Um, I can't wait to be there. It's going to be so amazing. I will be there on... I know that I will be there on Thursday and probably Friday at least. Maybe Saturday as well, but I will tell you more in, the, in a coming episode. So it's going to be fun. I will tell you. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please like, uh, share, subscribe, comment. If you didn't, please let me know what you actually didn't like in the comments below. I take any uh, constructive criticism. We will see each other very soon. And in the meantime, enjoy your knitting and your sewing and take care. Bye-bye.